Welcome to the Cod Pass Podcast, where your fishy past hooks your brilliant future. With Dr. Deborah, Laura, and Dr. Trish. And we're forwarding it, and then we will get started. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again, and we're excited. Um, I don't see us here yet. Do you guys see us? Yes, I do. You do. And I said we are live and talking about friendships. Okay. I'll play our song when Trish is ready. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, guys, you can you can go. Podcast podcast. Sorry, I have my volume up. Let me do it again. Welcome to the Podcast Podcast, where your fishy past hooks your brilliant future. With Dr. Deborah, Laura, and Dr. Trish. Woo! Kind of like those little teeny tiny moments before. I always think it's a it's fun to take a little peek, fun peek behind the curtain and see what it takes to kind of get going. Because a lot of people don't even try to get going because they don't even know what it takes. And you know, this is just a small snippet of all the big stuff we do that's messy behind the curtain. Well, and yeah, it's also kind of I like watching people because you can learn a lot about people's reactions when they're frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. And and I mean, and they record it. It's so strange. We don't record, record ours until we are live. So it helps chop a little bit of weirdness out of the front. But um, yeah, a lot of people, like their delay is like five minutes and you go, come on. Can't you <laughs> learn how to do live on Zoom before you get here? <laughs> <laughs> So Deborah, well, Dr. Deborah has decided that we need to talk about friendship today. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about true friendship. We're going to start off with the fishy joke, like we always do. Did you hear about the fight in the kitchen? Let me let me think. Let me think. It's a bunch of fish fighting. Um, 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 um. Oh, I'd love to figure these out. Okay, no. A cod got battered. Oh, <laughs> now I'm thinking of him in the... <laughs> oh, in the deep fryer? <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, I think I I'm going to go down to a Blue Water Grill in a few minutes and have my typical Friday afternoon club dish tacos. Oh, those are so good. I love that place. I, I, I love I, You there. know, I've been going there since I moved here. And um, uh, they're so sweet. They think I'm family. You know, they've known each husband, each <laughs> um, <laughs> company, because I used to bring my clients in there, you know, and then I used to have parties in there when I was running the banks. And then and then when I was running Starshine, uh, if people did a really good job with the kids and all that, we would have a party or we'd have a birthday party in there. And there were times that I had like uh, fundraiser parties where I would hire their chefs to come over. So I'm like part of the group, you know, <laughs> they're just so I love, them. but, but it is honestly the best sushi and the best uh, fish in, in Arizona. A lot of people have said that, not just me. The guy who owns it um, has restaurants over Fish Market and Blue Water Grill over on the coast of California. And he has a boat and um, it's not just his boat, but but they literally fly fresh fish straight from the ocean over there to this restaurant every day. And, wow. um, and, and it's just first class, you know, but it's not expensive. Like you can go in like this, you know, and not, not I mean, you can go in like all, all of us look a, quite a bit different today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that reminds way. me, 
Sounds like a place like Cheers, if you guys remember yeah. that TV show yes. where everybody knows your name and they were all friends. And honestly, I didn't really watch that show. So I don't know that much about it, but it was I didn't comedy. Either. So I, I would guess that it was a dysfunctional family, <laughs> dysfunctional friends and family that knew one another. And, uh, but it was, I, I think there, there were some episodes that were kind of funny. And so, uh, Deborah, would you like to talk about friendship or get us started talking about that today? Well, I'm glad you And just up why did you want to bring up friendship anyway? Because um, friendships are, are so uh, integral to a happy life, you know, true friendships. And we're going to talk about all friendships. We can talk about all friendships today and yes and that. But mm -hmm. I think friendships between women particularly are very um, healthy for you, you know, as a woman to have really true friendship as a woman. But when Laura brought up um, Cheers, I, I think about that every time I walk into a bar because you know, the song where everybody knows your name and everybody's glad you came. It's a place of belonging, you know, and for a lot of people, a bar is a place of belonging and that's fine. That's great. But it, it, people want to belong. And I think when we have true, authentic relationships, they help us navigate life. We, we all three help each other navigate life. I know that for sure, right? We talk about a lot of things. <laughs> we talk about a lot of things. We're not going to talk about some of those. No, we we're not going to talk, talk about, about some of, of the things. things. We have we have private things we talk about, but we talk about a lot of things to get us through life. And the other thing that true, authentic friends do for each other is they're honest with each other and not necessarily brutally honest or trying to, you know, cut someone down. That is not what I'm talking about, but it definitely are honest with each other. And the other thing that they do, we were talking before we started, is they, um, there's effort there, right? There's, there's the phone calls, there's the little, the little texts that let each other know that we're still uh, thinking of each other. There's um, uh, just, you know, if you if you have friends and you're not watering the garden, if you're not calling them or you're not staying in touch with them, they're not they're not friends just because you've known them for a lot of years. If if they're not making an effort to to know or you not making an effort back what's going on in your life, it's you know, you can't really say, oh, those are my best friends because they're not your best. Well, friends. um, I, I will challenge you on that because okay, I have I, like I have. That. I have a very good um, story about that, but I did want to say that uh, what you said first, my mom, when I was a little girl said, honey, always take care of your girlfriends because they'll stay with you through men, through illness, through laughter, and, and um, they're, they're the most important people in your life. And, um, and they'll, it's kind of like um, the family that you sort of wish you had, you know, most people, I think, I think the part of the reason that we're born into certain families is I think family and marriage is um, a place to grow. And sometimes it's painful, you know, but the people that you're, I, th I think we pick our families before we come down here because we want to maneuver ourselves in our life. So I believe that we come in with intention of doing something incredible. I think every single person that breathes air comes into this planet um, with a God-given direction and I think then we as souls or angels or whatever that we come down here to embody this body, um, we pick the difficulties that we're going to face. We pick the relationships that we're going to have in our life so that we shape ourselves to be able to do our work. I, I, I believe this. But, um, and so the, the hopping over to um, to people that you don't get in touch with very often so this has been a part of my life, my culture, my family. Um, and um, um, my girlfriend from seventh grade was um, one of these girlfriends where you trade clothes and, you know, you would never, ever, ever date anybody they had a crush on ever in your life. I would never even today 
even remotely go out with somebody that she was in love with in seventh grade. It would, it's off limits. And, and we didn't even make that rule. It's just, we would never do that, you know, because we trusted each other completely. And her name is Karen Doll Darling. And um, Laura has met her a few times. I think Laura and Karen love each other almost as much as we do. But Karen, Karen and I had military dads. Um, they were both in the Air Force. And so when we met, my dad was on a short term assignment to SAC Headquarters Strategic Air Command in Omaha. And it was it was a very stressful time in my family's life. Um, my brother had just been killed in a weird explosion. And um, my dad, had, I think because he was broken hearted from my brother, he had two heart attacks right in a row. And then um, right when we got to Omaha, he had another one. And um, Karen and I have, we've been with each other on some really drastic times. She was with me spending the night when my dad had a heart attack in Denver. And so anyway, Karen and I will go months, maybe, I don't think so, but maybe even a year, but I doubt it. But we'll go months and not talk to each other because we're both so busy. And we, you know, when we were young and raising kids and all that, it was really busy. But I got pregnant when I was 17 and I called her and her then boyfriend who ended up being her husband. And we've had such different lives. I mean, she's had more of a life like Laura, kind of, you know, sort of the perfect, Laura has two boys, but Karen had a boy and a girl and, you know, everything was perfect. And she married her college sweetheart and, you know, all of that stuff. And I was like, Karen, I'm a pregnant cheerleader. We were both cheerleaders. <laughs> and and uh, the minute I had my son, um, she came out, she flew out. And she was young, you know, then, I mean, we were only 17 years old or, um, and, and she has flown out to be with me at really pivotal times in my life. And I did the same thing for her. Um, and, um, and I love Karen and I always had a, I had a, I had a rule about my relationships that I kind of don't fight. I don't believe in it. If I believe it's a waste of time. I don't, I personally don't think you get anything resolved in it. I think you get hurt feelings that stay there forever and I just don't do it. But Karen and I have never, ever had a fight and we've had weird things happen. Like, uh, I was in, um, um, Westminster Abbey. You're so awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Westminster Abbey. And I get this phone call from Karen and I haven't talked to her in months. Right. So I'm, I know she needs me because we don't call each other unless we really need to talk for whatever reason, not always a disaster, but we just need each other. Right. Cause it's so not often. And, um, and I w walked outside and she's crying hysterically. Her mom still gets to me because I, I loved her mom. Her mom was in a really bad accident with her sister and she was killed and um, her sister was not. And um, Karen was hysterical. And I said, well, your mom was always super religious. <laughs> she was, she was very strong Catholic, but I said, I'm going to go in and light candles for your mother because your mom probably knows I'm right here and we can honor her right this minute. And Karen, it meant a lot. Well, then I said, well, I'm going to stay and listen to the minister. And when they handed out the bulletin, it was all about death and heaven. And wow. so I sent it overnight or it wasn't overnight, but like two day or something to Karen. And they read that, that piece out of the bulletin at her funeral. I mean, it was, wow. you know, what's the chance of all that? Yeah. And so um, we don't, we don't stay in touch, but we are in touch, you know? And so anyway, but I get your, I get what you're saying. Like if you're, if you've got friends now, you need to know what they're doing in order to, 
help yeah and, and and i don't mean a, a, like someone that you have a, a unbreakable bond with i'm talking about just acquaintances just because of circumstances and that's fine and, you know it's it's fine the way it is but i think we all have to i had to face the fact that um i don't need 30 friends close friends you know i i it was just a lot of managing relationships and people that didn't want to be there or be managed you know so um but then <laughs> i was telling trish and laura this the other day that when i met these two i never met two people that talked so much in my entire life and so we're, we were together in florida and it was it was just a magical trip magical trip and we're we're at this you know sketchy at best hotel but it was so cool haunted we, it was haunted it was oh. haunted so haunted and so we so we get up in the morning and these girls start talking and we're talking four hours and I'm like, can we get coffee please like i just need a beverage while we're talking for four hours so i learned i learned very fast the first day i'm like i gotta can i just run and get us some coffee so then um the next day i got up an hour early went and got coffee and i was ready for the marathon and yes it, it happened too well you brought us coffee in bed oh, yes every and, morning and then. you've been doing that ever since that when we're together you bring us coffee in bed it's my favorite thing in fact that would be one reason I would never get rid of you because you are the only person who's ever brought me coffee in bed. I have a servant's heart for sure. It's just something that I like to do, but I didn't know that I wasn't going to have coffee for four hours because you guys know stop talking. And it's all very profound and it's all very important. It's all very, there's not even a place to break. <laughs> what are we talking about now? Oh my gosh, you know, we went from quantum physics to, uh, I don't know, saving, you know, uh, armadillos out in the wild i mean it was all very important and i'm like oh, so, so finally i've learned i've learned that we are going to have these long deep conversations together but i get the coffee first i run fast <laughs> oh my gosh i love but, that uh, it, it is if, pretty incredible that we've only known you a year and a half yeah yeah it's amazing yeah. um one of the things i getting to trisha's point is there are some people in your life that every time you pick up the phone, time did not even exist between the time you talked last and now. And that's that's its own special bond of friendship. <laughs> either either you were tied together over a moment or over a long period of time, and there's that loyalty and trust and respect, whatever other love, you know, all the words. Um, and, and I love those friendships too, because you don't have to explain. You don't have to explain time. You just have to say what happened, you know, over that time and fill them in on the details. And then there's no pressure. Um, and, and it's a shame because I would love to keep in touch with people better, but I don't, I don't have the time either. Like I don't have in 168 hours a week, I don't have the time to reach out to everybody who's touched my heart in a big way. So those friendships are really important to me too. Absolutely. Well, well you, Deborah, Dr. Deborah, you you have more friends than anybody I've ever heard of. Every single time we get a phone call from you, you're going to friends with, or I mean, you're going to dinner with your high school friends. I'm like, how many high school friends do you have? Or do you go to dinner with them just all the time? And, and um, I hardly even know my high school friends. I mean, once in a blue moon, I talk to somebody, but it is in a blue moon. I partly again, I didn't live there very long, you know, and um, and I just, you know, all groups are it's like falling in love. You never you can't explain it. Right. And every group has its own dynamic. Yeah. Like, like Steve used to say when he was playing to a crowd. Steve. Um, former rock star husband, when he was playing in a band to the crowd, um, one crowd would be really funny. One crowd would be really sad or down. One crowd would be just like crazy up in their seat dancing. And he said it, it was like a personality thing. You know, it was the whole crowd had a personality. Like the, the guys that come off the, the stage and they go, that was the best crowd we've ever played in front of or they would come off early and go that crowd sucks we're out of here and it, and it, and it was it was palatable you could tell 
you know, and and I think that um, friendships are like that. You you know, it either works or it doesn't. And um, and I I kind of like I sort of don't believe in working on marriages or friendships. It's like you know, either they work or they don't, and they were there good for a while, but things are changed and it's time to go on. And I, 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 there's a part of me, I don't believe you can make things work after they don't work. I, 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 I mean, I am a product of what I'm saying because I just, it's like, well, you can try, you can go to a counselor, you can do this or that, but it just never fits. It's like you keep working on it and, and it, it's not fitting. And I just would go, I, I just would prefer to go, you know, this just, it worked and now it doesn't and let's go. And so that I, it may be a frivolous way of, I mean, maybe God will tell me I did it wrong, but I, it's just how I do it. Well, I think you're right about the fitting because it, when something fits, you don't have to even try. Like I, I don't even have to try. It's complete authenticity. And when you can be yourself with someone, it is so freeing. It is so positive when you feel safe with someone. And I'm not saying it's always perfect, but pretty darn near. And I, I think we all need to open up our hearts and open up our minds and say, you know what? I feel really good with that person. And I don't have to be afraid and put up walls and, and be, you know, and, and uh, question everything. But you it, know what? That comes from who you are, because there are three of us. And how many times in the past, or maybe even present, how many times are there three and you go off in the kitchen or you go off to the movie with one and the other one gets hurt feelings or starts complaining, mm -hmm. or they tell the, another person, you won't believe what Laura did. She was so horrible to me and she did that. And my feeling because i do have a couple of friendships like this which i i pretty much cut off is that they want to own me because of their own insecurities and they want me to convince them that i'll always be there for them or that i'll always take care of them or that i'll always be trustworthy you know or am i going to ever tell somebody some stupid story they've told me like are you kidding? People are not interested in your story. You know, I mean, it's not interesting to me. I'm, I'm not a gossiper, but that's kind of like, we're all pretty strong, independent. We know who we are. We don't glom onto anybody, none of us, but that's taken a lot of work. I mean, I don't think I was even like that in high school. I never talked behind people's backs. I just thought it was tacky, um, but it's just not, I think when when that kind of thing happens, it's about the person, not the relationship. It's a mismatch mm -hmm. of electrical energy, real of energy. energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, I um, if I can, I'd like to bring in the analogy of fitting, as Deborah said. And it's like maybe people fit you once upon a time, but as you grow, they no longer fit you. They, they. I think Trish mentioned this. They were there, you grew together at a time and a place, be it good or bad. You know, like if you have a bad relationship, it may put you in a trajectory. To, it's a growth opportunity, as I call it. But it's almost like that, that those clothes you have in your closet. How many of us think I'll be skinny again? Or and, and by the time, if we ever are, it's probably out of style. So I would suggest going through your closet and getting rid of the things that no longer serve you well isn't that word call call yes calling yes you can call you can also like um you can also uh, how do you spell sip. that how do you spell C -U call c-u-l-l -L, calling that's what it, what is calling i i'm learning it's, something it's new called I, calling think out, it's, I think it's, it's like calling fish. out the herd it's called calling out the herd it's where you get rid of the i don't know why they call out the herd but they c-u-l-l -L, C U L L out. I'm liking it up. Like calling out the weak links or something like that. Oh God, don't, don't call know. me I out of your. Do don't say I one think... day you and Trish will get together and say we got to call Deborah out. We're calling her out. <laughs> call her out. Call, call her, out. her out. Yeah. 
Well, I, a selective you know, Laura, I think that... slaughter of wild animals. <laughs> oh, I wasn't far off, but ew. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I said, I think it has to do with fish. And I it's, it was... fishermen are to campaign. Oh, I'm not going to even say it because I don't okay. agree with it. I okay. um, call each other out. We will sift like like digging for panning for gold or or going through our closets and making decisions that are just more honest you know pull the people in that fit you the best now and it doesn't mean there have to be hurt feelings you can just leave someone behind um and then the other thing i want to say too is mixing friendships when i was little i used to because i was such a high extrovert and i loved all my friends but i loved them for their different qualities i just didn't realize they wouldn't love each other because I loved them. I loved whatever it was about them. And you you get a gathering of 10 people and nobody got along because they were so different. And I learned that early on. Usually it's one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why what we have with three of us is really unusual. Usually three females together, it's not, it doesn't work well. Well, you know what's well, really three interesting. Females are not known for supporting each other. And, and in fact, as a female CEO and involved in lots of different female CEO roles, like uh, I, I was in several Bible studies of, of business owners and I was in, um, you know, commercial real estate business, banking business, and, and mothers of preschoolers, you know, little kids. And um, I was always shocked. And then I had the data behind it because I, at one time worked for at and and they did data on everything. Uh, women rarely promote each other. And that's kind of disgusting. Um, and especially if they're upper executives, um, a, a woman CEO will rarely have women on their frontline um, executives. It's like shocking shocking and i was completely different because i really wanted women to come up in the world because i thought it would create a more harmonious role to have men and women together all the time and i just thought god knew what he was doing by getting about half and half right and so um i always have supported and and helped younger women get up and also around me i always tried to have half and half but um but it is so prevalent when i found that out i started doing my own little data thing in phoenix um because phoenix had uh, one i think phoenix had one of the highest number of female ceos i believe at one time and um and so i just started looking at their hiring practices and and who they had around them on their board etc and i swear now, when I found this out, it, it was probably a good 20 years ago, and I pray that some of that has changed, but I was just reading an article uh, a few days ago about the fact that women need to be better about supporting other women and helping yeah. them and, and, and giving them that cord, but there's some psychological weirdness about that and women having to kind of tower over people and being insecure again insecure and so um yeah well, I, do I think you're right i think women are 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 not supportive sometimes of each other but when they are it's formidable and well I, sex it, in the city is, is a good example those girls are still friends even off the camera there was a lot of wisdom in that show. I know every yeah. episode, every line, and some of it were re was really good wisdom because when Samantha got sick and she had cancer and somebody said something to Carrie, she said, she's my insides. And I just cried because you girls are my insides, you know? And that that's, I mean, and, and you always will be. And Laura was just talking about, I wrote down a couple of words she said. She talked about sifting and mixing people. And I'm like, you know what? We had the conversation that we all three are the flower and the cake in our families. And we, I want to talk about F -L -O -U -R, that. F-L-O-U-R, because uh, for all day when you said that, I thought it was F L O. -U -R. Well, we could be the flowers too, you know. No, I don't but... think my family would say I'm the flower. -L -L but you, but you definitely, we definitely are the flower and the cake. And what I mean by that is that we are the base ingredients that keeps 
that holds it all together. And we sort of went into some analogies or so we looked at flour and the way the yeast and how it rises and then the flour. And if, and if we put too much flour in, guess what? It gets all sticky and messy. So we have to make sure we just sprinkle our flour. But I think that because our personalities, we are very different, but we are very much our values and our morals and our our um, character. Are, Although our are morals very, are a little sketchy at times. <laughs> are very similar. So yeah, we're not going to talk about that, but you know, um, no, I think we have good morals. But um, so what do you think about that, about us being alike and that's why we can be just so uh, easy. We're so easy together. I well, know. I really love powerful women. Um, I love powerful men too, but um, powerful women help me to learn and help me to um, grow. And also usually they're busy. Like I don't need a needy friend. I don't, I don't want to hear every detail of every single thing she's done. And um, I don't have time. Um, I'm always focused on, um, agendas, even agenda to have fun. So I don't, I really don't like wasting time. And I said that the other day on a, on a zoom call and somebody really took offense with that and said, you know, there's nothing wrong with wasting time and all I'm like, I'm not judging that. I, it, people want to live their life, wasting time, you know, drinking beer, eating potato chips, watching TV. Um, they can be those backdrop people. I don't care. I just don't want them in my life. And um, I want people that are motivated that they, they look at this gift that God has given them in their body and their mind and their heart. And if they're so lucky to have responsibilities, children, um, spouses, friends, whatever, that they take it to heart and they decide how they're going to be that day and they do something about it. Those are the people I want to be around. And, and also what Laura said, my parents, um, they had so much wisdom. It's so beautiful. A lot of stuff that I've written about when I start writing books, I, I read, I write a lot about my parents, but one of the things that my, my parents said is always make friends that don't look like you because your, your life will be totally fascinating. And when you go into a party, don't go try to meet the person who looks like you go find the person who makes you the most uncomfortable and go introduce yourself. And so a lot of times when I go to a party, pretty much hundred percent of the time, cause I've been doing it my whole life. I'll look around the room and I'll see somebody that I'm like, I do not want to meet that person. And, um, and sure enough, I've met amazing people that were shy or, you know, or whatever, and they were fascinating. Maybe they're not going to be my best friend, but it was not a wasted party, you know, of, of, um, I don't like people that gossip or what, what is that? What is that saying? Um, people meet people. There are some people that talk about people and then there are some people that talk about the news or something and then there are some people that talk about visionary things or something or yeah changing. i know what you mean i don't remember what that saying is what is um, that saying and and i just don't feel i don't like cocktail talk i like fascination i like to learn for one thing yeah. i like to yeah. laugh i love to learn I love if to somebody learn. makes me laugh i'm you know laura makes me laugh really hard well both of these girls make me laugh um and i love to laugh and so i love all that but i probably couldn't be around somebody that made me laugh 100 percent of the time i like i like to learn and i like to be challenged a little bit um i don't i don't like i i don't want to live my life uh normal or predictable really i don't i mean i've kind of proven it <laughs> <laughs> is there I'm a way for me to, oh, go ahead laura uh so is this it trish surround yourself with people who talk about visions and ideas not other people is that it something yeah similar? yeah but i mean i put in there the news because in the last three years i swear to pete if I start a conversation with almost anybody, they've got to tell me what's going on with COVID uh, or 
you know, or what's going on with the injection or what's going on with Donald Trump's hair. And it's like, seriously, (laughs) I mean, I just want to say, why don't you just get a life? You know, this is great. I have found some others. This is, I'm just going to call these, sip these out. If they talk about other people with you, they will talk about you with other people. Bam. And then listen carefully to how a person speaks about other people to you. This is how they will speak about you to other people. I mean, you know, and I think that's it. I think we instinctually know that when somebody says something, it is, I mean, you know, obviously gossip is, um, I think frowned upon in the Bible, you know, I'm not, the, I don't know that much about the Bible, but it it's sort of delicious because it's instant and it's kind of makes you, well, it's make limbic. You feel about you, but it makes you feel bad about them, which makes it's you feel a dr- good about it's a you. Drug. Right? It's a limbic drug. It is. It is. And it's a little bit of chaos. So, so, you know, I, I will hear it and kind of process it, but then I move on because I don't, life is too big to talk about people's predicaments, right? Like everybody has had a predicament and maybe we didn't come out on the other side well, or maybe we're not proud. And, you know, we, we all have our daily battles and they're not necessarily like even disasters. It could be something like alcohol or drugs. It could be sex. It could be, you know, addictions like TV or, or as you said, Trish, wasting time. Uh, Bo Eason calls it recovery. Some people think they're recovering by watching TV and maybe they are, but I don't recover that way. I rest or sleep. I might play Animal Crossing. Well, I do, I do believe in recovery, Laura. I mean, I, I am, I, you know me, I will go, uh, I'm going to unplug for a couple of hours or I'm going to unplug for a week or, or something. And that was kind of one of the reasons I wanted to move down to Costa Rica. I just felt like that culture was more prevalent of what I wanted to live. I I wanted to learn about the new bird in the rainforest. I didn't want to talk about Donald Trump and um, or COVID. And so I love recovery. I love my bed. I love to sleep. Um, And I love to watch TV. I mean, not TV movies, really. Um, or some special, you know, thing, but I do that on purpose. It's not Mm -hmm. a default for me. Um, When I talk about wasting time, I'm talking about people who just live on default. They don't know why they, they literally go. I, I, I saw this quote yesterday. I could not believe it. It was in the newspaper out here as the local paper And this guy actually said this to everybody in Carefree. He said, our sunsets make the, make uh, the struggle of having to go through the day worth it. (laughs) And I thought that's like people who say, oh, I can't wait for Saturday. You know, you're like, well, what about the other days? You well, know? and you know what, Trish, we need to, the one thing that we have in common, and I think maybe the people that we want to be around have in common, is that we have so much to talk about. There is so much to, I, I get so excited when I, when I learn something new, and then I talk to you, and then I talk to Laura, or talk to other people, and I found other people that like to talk about deeper level things or spiritual things or or there's so much to talk about that is amazing you know uh uh, that to to be like you said saying that our sunsets make the struggle of the day if your day i mean certainly we have struggling days here and there but i'm telling you what if i don't have joy most of the day it's something's wrong with me well i I think i'm not i think that is the christian road i i think that the true um christian road is uh that we're here to edify what jesus asked us to do and that is what oprah said is the key to why she made it and that is she starts every single morning always has with being grateful and that when you live in a state of grace that's biblical. And that is the only way to cultivate hope and 
manifesting the secret. Manifesting is all about putting yourself in a vibration in line with where you're going. Because yes. in the Bible, it talks about God always in creation. So the truth is that all of our judgments, uh, I, th for me, this is just my truth. I don't, you know, may, may not be true of anybody else, but I believe judgment and putting things down is all satanic. I think that's the evil. And it has to do with living in the past, because if you're judging anything today, anything at all, even the color green, oh, that's green. It's based on what you learned about judging that green. If somebody said that color is a combination of yellow, brown, and pink, then when you saw that, you'd say, don't you love that combination of yellow, brown, and pink? I mean, our judgments come from what we've been experiencing and what we've been taught, and they only keep you small. They only mm -hmm. keep it small. The only thing that opens you up is when you go, today's a new day. I'm grateful for where I am. Everything behind me has brought me to this. Now I'm going to create my future. And you live in this perpetual motion of aha and what am I going to ah. do now? And ah, and, and going, wow, God did all this stuff for me today. And then you go to bed at night and you can sleep because you've wiped a away all the past again you're starting all over again and i believe that that's the bible is constant creation co-creation that god works through us as us in the best way that we open ourselves up to be grateful and go i don't know and even those hard times i i think some of it is stuff we've picked to help us to get a little bit better and so that we can find our dreams and find and uh I sent you guys this book yesterday called. Matt. Yeah, I saw that. I, I didn't see it because I was, oh. um, let me find it. That, but that, I do want to say something about being grateful. And I've probably said this before, but it, it, uh, it's worth repeating. I know Andrew Huberman talks about grateful. Like if there's one thing that billionaires and super achievers have in common is this gratefulness and i want people to realize that it's not just because i know that some of the gurus or personal development people say be grateful for what's coming be grateful that you're a multimillionaire. be grateful but you know what maybe you can't get there yet and so it's not real to you and one of the things huberman talks about is be grateful for the kindnesses you see in the world you know there, mm -hmm. and you can you can find them you can go look them up there's so many people being kind to each other I know there are people that are not, but you can be grateful for that. And then grateful that you woke up today and it's a new opportunity. Talk about recovery. You know, maybe you had a bad day. Maybe you woke up. I've had bad weeks. The first time my, my house had that issue in 2006, <clears throat> my weeks would start strong and then I'd be knocked down by the end of the week. And then, you know, after six months, it was reversed. And I was just, I felt like I was going it alone and I was situationally depressed. But I eventually got over it. And because of that, I was stronger for the next thing and the next thing, which is how this last thing was a little bit easier for me because I can start stacking stories and say that built resilience or that built, I know I'm spiritually here to fulfill a process. Uh, and that was an answer to prayer. And that's where faith comes in. But, and it, believe me, I still have bad days. There are days that I beat my chest like a gorilla and get mad in traffic especially when, when I get stuck in it and I'm like, damn, I should have remembered this. I was in it yesterday. How did I forget this? But, um, you know, I just think people can, can definitely be grateful for the small things around them that they see, even if they're not grateful for something in their life yet. It's well, they coming. can be grateful for their pillow. Or well, their that's shower, true. But or... sometimes it is hard to get in touch with that. I'm just saying, you can start by being grateful for the other little kindnesses you see. So yes. you can start to get used to that feeling. Because well, any, anything with gratitude in it raises your vibration. I mean, it doesn't matter if what you're grateful for. It once you get off of um, the lower vibrations, you begin to raise your vibration. And I, raising your vibration is the only way to heal and the only way to manifest. 
If you exactly. can't, you cannot mm -hmm. heal or manifest in a low vibration. 100%. We, we know it. We know it from all of our work at Young Living. We know it from all the doctors around Young Living. It's like uh, in right now, people are scrambling, trying to be more alkaline, trying to eat better, trying to figure out how to be happier. And and the thing is, that it really goes down backward to uh, to, you know, being grateful for anything anything as and the opposite of that is constant complaining constant complaining about everything that's happening seeing the world you know at level one level below level one level two where everything irritates you where it, and where and some people look at everything like oh my god that's the most gorgeous tree like right now it's raining and it's i'm sitting in front of a gorgeous cedar tree out my window and it's just beautiful it I love nature. It is I love too. nature, but I'm I'm telling you, there's um and, and sometimes if I ever complain, um, I try to catch myself right away because it's not the person I want to be or the or it's not serving the purpose that I've been put on this earth for, which is to encourage people and lift people up and to live a very joyous, peaceful life. Yeah. Um you know, if somebody ever asked me a question, what kind of house do you want? I'd say a peaceful one, please. A, ha <laughs> a happy one, please. I don't. Uh, how about it. a how about a beautiful and peaceful one? Yeah, I love can, I love beauty. I love beauty and plushness and that, but I can give myself that, you know. And I just feel like when it comes to people, we we I'm attracted to people that are, are of high vibration. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun. I did um, post something on our um, page and it was kind of a fun little thing. I don't think I can post a picture here on Zoom. Can I, or not? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, all you have to do. In fact, I'm going to, um, I'm going to make you the host because um, I have to go out of here in a minute because I got to get on another Zoom call. And um, all right. So do I just share a share screen and then I can share a picture? Your host, and now you can share the screen. All right. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yes, ma'am. I don't um, see what it is, but yep. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Okay. I love that so feather one. You just got that feather. Feather one. I, I'm into feathers now. Anybody that's listening and want to give me feathers, I'm into feathers. <laughs> Tickle my feather. So I'm looking at this and I, I looked up some things that are common in friendship. And of course, friendship bracelets, right? You can see the friendship bracelet there. Can you guys see that? I can. Yep. Okay. And then um, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the Kladag ring. It's the one where it's the Irish ring where the hands are holding the heart. Oh, that's yeah. That's a symbol of friendship. Uh, tattoos, getting friends will get tattoos together. And um, if you can see where the where the heart or the infinity sign is with the feather and the rainbow color, that's a tattoo. And it's also infinity is a sign of friendship. Because oh, I didn't goes, know that. Yep, it goes on forever and ever. Um, topaz is the color of friendship because... Um, it it, it uh, represents fidelity. And then the next thing is the jade plant. The jade plant is the plant of friendship. And um, it's good luck and friendship, the jade plant means. The yellow roses, which I think are just so beautiful, um, are considered the friendship well, roses. you see those right there? I've got a oh, whole bunch you of... have them right behind you. Look, show yes. you. I'll, I'll show you. The yellow roses are friendship roses. Usually white, pink, or red are for lovers, and um, which I love those colors too. But yellow are warm, straightforward, uncomplicated love is what yellow roses represent. Um, the next flower there is the chrysanthemums, which are the little mums. And the chrysanthemums um, represent optimism and joy. They also re represent health and happiness and friendship. Uh, the beautiful um, lapis lazuli, the blue and black, which are my my uh, oh, brand oh, colors. Oh, I've got that. The lapis oh my lazuli. Gosh, Chris has it all. 
<laughs> means uh, it's honesty, truth, and strength and friendship. Um, wow. And the next one is fire and water, which we, you know, uh, we just talked about, you know, how we, how fire and water go together and make it strong. The last one is the interlock and hearts. And that is a sign uh, of hopes and dreams for friendship. So I thought those were kind of fun little. Um, Check that out. Wow. Isn't that cool? oh. I, I posted that on our, um, our Facebook page and I thought it was okay. Oh, That's look at you. I've got, got three. The, I've got, got three, the lapises. three lapis yeah. hearts. Well, because we've got our star, Starshine store. Yes. You know, and I bought all these to sell. And then they're about friendship. So yeah, isn't that cool? I didn't cool? know that. I didn't know that. Yes. Well, one of, one of the, that was great, Deborah. I, but I, uh, not, but. And I'd like to add, yes, and I'd like to add, because I know we're getting close to wrapping up and it sounds like Trish needs to go and that we're not doing Clubhouse today, but I- No, I, I think, I, I'm not even sure we should do Clubhouse anymore because, um, you know, I have less and less time to do the things that I, I really am focused on. And that to me is just a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we never, we didn't figure it out and we can always go back to it because we have some content out there in replays. Yeah, and we're all, we all three agree on that then. Yeah, Aren't we, we whole, alchemized? Yeah, we alchemized. But um, one of the things I, I want to say about friendship that we were talking about pre-recording is settling. Um, I have a friend that I've been friends with for years and she had a friend who, not, not a friend, it was a sister <laughs> who had a friend I know this is sounding very convoluted. It was my friend's sister was friends okay. with someone who made her feel that. But I think that she was so lonely because it was in an area where you can't get very many friends or whatever, or they had time together or whatever, that they were, she was unwilling to leave this friend, even though the friend often didn't show up when she said she would, didn't call, was kind of mean to her, was jealous, all like these really negative things, but she was willing to stay with the friend. And I would recommend people don't do that. I mean, that's shocking to me that people do that. And I think of that as being, I mean, we can all get in a trap, but I'm going to suggest to people, there are plenty of fish in the sea. There you go. There's the fish. You can always find another friend or befriend yourself. First. Be your best friend. Be your own, Be best, your own friend. best friend. Yeah. I mean, when I was down in Costa Rica, well, I ended up making some friends, but I was pretty much alone, you know, and um, I think, well, I shouldn't say that I was with James 24 seven, <laughs> but I mean, if I was hanging out or going shopping or something like that, I was doing it by myself. Um, and I think people should learn how to do that. I personally think it's very dangerous for people to be alone 24 seven. I just don't think it's healthy. I think we are social animals and we're supposed to interact and that makes us better people. But, um, but yeah, I, I have called uh, friends that don't, don't give me good energy. I've called it. And, and if I get, if I have a friend and I have a couple right now that I've known for a really long time um, and, but the friendship has always been one-sided. You know, it's like they call me when they need to dump some more stuff or get free advice or whatever. And and yet I give them advice and they pay and take other people's advice, you know, and you're like, well, people pay me a lot of money for my advice and I'm giving it to them for free and they don't respect it. And they go and do something that's total opposite of what they know that they would have gotten from me. And, and I just don't want the, those people in my life anymore. So yeah. I ha Laura's known me a long time. I have really cold a lot over the years that she's known me. Um, she's met many, many people uh, through these 17 or so years that we've known each other. And they are not in my life anymore. Yeah, we both called them. And uh -huh. again, people show up as they're meant to. And I, one more thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to Deborah again, since she started this, but I think Trisha's mom had really, really good advice that 
any females that have hung on this long and are still listening, this is like sizzle, good. But Trisha's mom told her, don't make your husband your girlfriend. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's something I probably did early on in the marriage because that's what I craved. But, you know, the, men aren't women. <laughs> well, it, and, it's and, kind of mean, really. It's kind of mean because men are wonderful because they have all these masculine qualities, but they're not a girlfriend. And my mom, my mom was such a good wife to my my husband, my dad, and my dad was such a good husband to, to my mom, but I, they both really valued their friends. My dad had a hunting trip every uh, year for two weeks. And um, my mom said they would spend the equivalent of her entire year's uh, budget for food for the family on those two weeks, you know? And, well, that's uh, exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say, what, what you two just said at the end. I'm, and this is so bizarre. I was just going to say how important it is with friendship and especially male, female relationships or your relationship is that you, that you are strong alone, but you're strong together, that you have your own interests, your own life, your own friends, you, because that's what makes a good, good relationship. And, and that makes a good relationship with your girlfriends too. Well, it's also more interesting. I mean, much more interesting, you get really boring when you can't bring anything new into the relationship and when they know yeah. you like um um byron for instance he and i worked together for about 17 years and um we i've paid him and now he pays me for coaching but um i've you know we we have worked in parallel really needing the work that we've done and it's always been different every year we work on different projects or whatever but we have a lot of um respect for each other and we don't take that for granted and we um we 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 try to help the other person no matter what the situation and um and I know he's a man and he knows I'm a woman. There's never been any funny stuff about that ever. And we, we truly are good working partners, but um, I think that I, I really wish marriage would be redefined because I think marriage should be something that should bring you joy every day, but both people have yep. to work, have to make sure that, okay, we've got the charisma, we've got the magic. Now let's take care of each other as much as we can and try not to bug each other as much as we can. And um, I don't know, I don't know if there's anything really like that, but I saw it in my parents where they were so independent, but they so admired each other. Isn't that like zero point energy in the middle of it? Is that vacuum? So yeah. each person needs to have their own vacuum. Each yeah. person needs to have their, and, and then you come together and it's just a spark, right? Because you, you, you have space is so necessary in relationships, space and alchemy, space and alchemy. We're just, there you go. That's like the infinity loop space yeah. and alchemy. Well, yeah. you guys, I hate to run, but I've got to get off and because I've got to turn my zoom on to something else. And, okay. um, um, but I love you guys. And, uh, this was fascinating. It's always it fascinating. I, not, you know, namaste. not my not stay. My stay. <laughs> yeah. I love you both. <laughs> Thank well, you for uh, being my friend. <laughs> yeah. So see you next week, do you want, do you want to see them all? All oh, wait. oh shoot i put mine away i have a little teeny tiny crystal ball that's i will buy one of those from our store i want one of those lapises because oh, they're the lapis very lazuli. very expensive a lapis lazuli. they're very expensive at the store yes. okay i'll see if i can do a payment plan okay. i love you guys <laughs> I, I more can than accept that i can anything that. look for this on our recording on our youtube channel yes. the cod pass podcast yes. please yes. go there and sign up subscribe Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. Have a good week. See ya. Bye. Thank you for being.